How's it going guys? Chaos Prime here and today we have a lot of news to get through so I want to jump right in. If you find this useful or informative, drop a like, subscribe, only 6 to 2 subs to 3k and share. Retweet, all of it helps. Thanks. So on to the video. Despite the demo having colossal issues, it seems it was a very successful expedition. In two and a half days, they had nearly 9 million hours of play, over 1 million strongholds completed and nearly 2 million grabbits were slaughtered. Yep, grabbits. These creatures. You monsters! What is wrong with you people? What did they ever do to you? Look how cute they are. Moving on. Along with this, real world testing brought to life many things that were new and have since been fixed over the weekend or are in the process of being fixed. Entitlement bugs. These are essentially access to VIP exclusive gear that you would gain if you gained access to the VIP. This is also now being awarded to players that didn't actually gain access to the VIP because of the issues. If you pre-order the game, you will be given all VIP exclusive gear. They've had server performance updates to address much of the rubber banding, so this should be much less if not completely eradicated. Fixes for infinite loads and more are being investigated and I have heard that these are actually on the way to being fixed in time for Friday. Platform bugs to validate javelin unlocks, client and platform login bugs especially on Xbox who seem to have been hit the hardest. The demo being 6-7 weeks old is like an ancient museum piece now. Why they chose to go with two different builds still to now I can't get my head around. It doesn't make any sense. However, many issues were raised. People were raising things that were already fixed and sadly even for the demo on Feb 1st won't make it into the final build. It's crazy but it seems the demo itself is being patched from the VIP. It seems a colossal waste to use resources for this but at the very least we can take some solace that some of these issues are new and fixes will be applied to the retail release. Here is a list of a few fixes that won't make it to the public demo starting this weekend but are actually fixed for the retail release. Weapons with 0% infusions weapons with bonuses that applies to different javelins, plot integrity, party gather issues, changes to javelin unlock behavior, fixes for losing XP at the end of some expedition, performance improvements, additional stability fixes, a social hub, the launch bay, and a few thousand more, literally as they put it. So though it went horribly wrong in many many ways, there is a silver lining in all of this and that is that it's helped make the final build that bit more stabler. Is that even a word? The question now is, was this ever a demo? Of course not, it's a beta, both the VIP and the open one. But hey, at least they tried, right? The heart wants what the heart wants. It seems that the story missions will not be replayable, and this by and large is due to the fact that four Tarsis will evolve over time, assumed with the story. However, the decision to omit the story campaigns being replayable is weird. Destiny 2 did this, and it was immediately ridiculed, it was hated upon, I don't understand why they would go down this route. They could have easily made them a part of a contract or a daily story mission much like in Destiny 1. I really see this as an odd decision and hope it's something they can change and implement something like this post launch. At launch Anthem will only have free strongholds for users to do. Sure you're going to have higher difficulty settings to get through but is free really enough? If they release a stronghold every 6-8 to eight weeks or a few every 3 months it might be okay but I'm not sure. Hopefully the roadmap can outline more after the game is released. As well as strongholds, we will have legendary contracts that we will be able to do as part of the endgame experience. We still know nothing of the Shape of Storm that we saw at E3, in fact we don't even know if it's still even in the game anymore. There has been radio silence on this. The only thing we have remotely linking anything to the Shape of Storms is this little excerpt from Chad. I'm looking forward to the open demo weekend starting this Friday and having more players join us. We hope to see everyone from the VIP demo return, see you in game and make sure to stick around for Sunday afternoon. You'll see a glimpse of some of the cool things we'll be doing in the future. So either they're going to be live streaming or they're going to be showing something in game that's going to be triggered as an event, I'm not sure. I'm really hoping it's the Shape of Storms and if it is an addition to the end game content this would be awesome. This would be exactly the type of thing that I personally would love to see them do. This sort of PR would be amazing. But again, it could be something completely different, it could just be a stream, we don't know. But in terms of the Shaper Storm and actually whether it's in the game or not, this is the closest we've come to any form of speculated news about it because they've been so tight-lipped. 
So guys, let me know. Do you think free strongholds and legendary contracts will be enough and how often are you expecting content drops? Let me know below. Next I wanted to talk about something quite different. The misconceptions of the demo compared to the latest build, which is pretty much gold now. It's so disheartening to read and see so many people on forums and YouTube completely bashing the game for the dismal launch it had. And by launch I mean the demo. And by demo I mean a beta. It's a 6-7 week old demo. It's nowhere near a true reflection of the game it is in terms of fixes and quality of life updates. Hell, even the keyboard and mouse fixes are not in the build for the demo. It's a real shame and the screenshot of the microtransaction store has done nothing to help the situation. The devs have come forward and have said those prices are not final, but EA has such a bad reputation, it's hard. I just hope those that are watching this video will understand that a demo that is 6-7 weeks old in build is prehistoric. I mean, it pretty much predates back to the Big Bang. I mean, you would expect to see it featured more in movies like... And that's not an understatement either. The core foundation of the game is great, it's a joy to play and a great experience for all involved. So don't let something that is this old mar your perception. If you enjoyed the core of the game, the missions, the stronghold, the final release will simply have more of this. Even with it being a demo and an old build, they have been working around the clock to fix issues, especially the notorious 95% loading bug, even though the issue is more widespread and it seems ISP issues were also partly to blame with what I assumed earlier was server disconnects. The final release has many fixes that the demo simply will not get, and it's for this reason why I think Bioware made a mammoth of an error in having two distinct versions of the build and not having one closer to the final product. Simply put, having two versions seems to be counterproductive and damaging the reputation more than it's helping. In fact, it's causing so many more issues that it's wasting valuable resource time that could be spent on the latest build. Now I know there are people working on the final build and you know, people don't all work on one project and there are other people designed for other things, but the resource being wasted is just a waste. Simply put, if it's a waste, it's a waste. I mean, to give you more insight into the final release, in the latest build, quest objectives are easier to follow. Enemy AI is said to be improved, previously in the alpha and the game changes, and in the demo as well, it was seen where minor enemies were not engaging, they were just standing there, almost like they were lagging, and to be honest, it was most in your face when you was rubber banding and lagging, so maybe it was lagging issues, but this has also been addressed. Fort Tarsus has sprinting, the party UI that's not in the demo is in the final game, so as you can see, two builds are night and day apart. They are just completely different games. But it seems if the beta did something right, it was the fact that it outlined and brought to light issues that a controlled environment could never do. And that is real world testing. And that is exactly what this VIP demo was. And to be honest, it's exactly what the open demo is going to be. It's going to be server testing all the way. The access times for the demo will also be split. So different regions will gain access sooner or later. Not everyone will be rushing in at once, which was another reason why the servers went down. It simply couldn't handle that much traffic at one time. It simply spiked and it spazzed out the system. But with this new way of doing it, by staggering people into access based on their time zone, this will also help. Well guys, let me know in the comment section below what you think. I think that's everything I wanted to say on the matter, so I'm going to end this here. Thanks for watching and your continued support. It's always appreciated. 62 subs to go. If you want to help support the channel, drop a like, subscribe and share. Follow me on the Twitter and you can also join me on Discord. Details in the description below. Until next time, Javelineers, remain legend.